We begin in Rorikstead and I head to the local inn to meet a guy named Eric. He tells me he wants to be an adventurer, so I go talk to his dad and he says, Perhaps you should let a father decide what is best for his own son. Feeling defeated by failing my first task, I go ask the bard to play a song to get me hyped for the epic adventure I'm about to embark on. Our hero, our hero, claims a warrior's heart. I tell you, I tell you, the dragon. After getting some rest, I inquire about how this once barren land is thriving and lush, and he tells me it's due to hard work and the blessing of the gods. I head out to pick some crops to sell to make a little cash, and this guy with a pretty sick handlebar mustache tells me, Do yourself a favor and don't have children. They're good for nothing at all. Now equipped with some solid grade A parenting advice, I proceed to grab some cabbage and then meet Rorik. He tells me about how he bought up all the land when his friends were fighting in a war. I walk by gazing up at the beautiful scenery and look up at the farm windmill. I could really see myself settling down in a place like this. Standing atop a guard tower, a child stops to stare at me, maybe because I'm a stranger. The stare lasts a little too long and then she houdinis her basket and runs away. I head back into the inn to talk to a barkeep named Michelle. I try to sell her some cabbage, but she only has six septums, so I ask Meralki instead, and he seems to have the coin to pay for my crops, so I go ahead and sell my goods. I ask him where I can learn about magic, and he warns me that nobody here cares much for magic, and I wonder if he's aware of the witch child outside that can make baskets disappear. I sit down and have a chat with the Gajit. She schools me on skooma and spills the beans about her supplier, but tells me to find my own supply. After a quick equipment change, I'm looking to purchase some cheap food with the money I made selling crops. I grab some charred skeever meat and then I accidentally buy some elf-eared elk that was overpriced and unappetizing looking. With buyer's remorse in full effect, I go outside and grab some fresh air. I take another majestic look at the windmill I was admiring earlier and steal some more crops to make me feel better about getting absolutely robbed buying the elf ear elk. I take a little stroll wondering what my next goal should be and I am blown away by how great this guard's armor looks. After a quick gear change, I head off in the direction of Riverwood. I walk and walk and walk and walk and walk some more. I snag some more flowers and come across an injured man in the middle of the road. I am suspicious that it's a trap, so I approach with caution. He asks for a health potion and I do not have one, so I just continue on, leaving him to die. I do feel a little bad, but what could I do? Night falls and I can hear wolves howling in the distance. I change my equipment and grab my mage light staff to shed a little light on the situation, and holy shit, there's a giant just ahead. I keep a close eye as I pass and sheathe my weapons as we do not seem to be threatened by each other. I gaze up at the night sky as it glows with a vibrant orange. I perform an elegant leap over the fallen tree in the middle of the road that is blocking my way. An abandoned cart sits near a signpost and I choose not to investigate in fear that it could be another trap. I see some sort of mage and a couple red guards battling at the crossroads. The mage seems to be frozen in place until I strike it with a well-aimed shot of my bow. Not my smartest move is that unfreezes him and he makes quick work of the two men that were fighting him. Once done with them, he makes a beeline for me and kills me quite swiftly. This time I try sneaking by and in the brush I'm startled by a dead gypsy horse. I let the people finish their battle and peering over a rock I determine it's safe to continue on. I stop to check my direction and realize I've been walking the wrong way this whole time. I approach a hold's banner indicating I'm in Falkreath territory. I come across Granite Hill Carriage Stop. I make a quick stop to Herbs in the Hills to put all the flowers and plants I've been picking to use. Upon entering I don't see anyone working in the shop so I help myself to the alchemy table. Suddenly a voice startles me saying, That's a fine potion you've put together. I make some potions of magicka fortification, alteration, and conjuration. None of which are spells I know yet so that didn't help me at all. I find an herbalist guidebook and thumb through it, learning some valuable information about what a few different herbs and plants are useful for. I ask Helgi, the herbalist, if she needs any help, and she says, Of course, of course, of course, like a broken record, and gives me a note rather a shopping list. I decide I don't have time to deal with this now, so I read through a few other notes while I take a load off. As I exit Herbs in the Hills, a courier hands me a grip of new notes. The sun is rising and I decide to take a moment to meditate. Upon feeling rejuvenated, I leave the carriage stop and continue my trek to Riverwood. I come across the North Falkreath Hold Gate and the Half Moon Mill. It appeared abandoned, so I stole some freshly butchered meat, thought about running the sawmill, decided not to, and continued on my way. Looks like my mage friend from earlier met a cruel fate. I accidentally pick up the body and a guard tells me, Careful. That. I've got no shame, so I loot the corpse right in front of the guards. As I investigate his body, I steal the spell tome, Conjure Mana Grumite Bog Looter. No idea what this is. Guess I'll find out later. Immediately, I see another corpse, and again, I'm like, finders keepers. I see some wolves running in the forest about 100 yards away, and I keep my distance and my guard up. As I carry on, I see a fight breaking out, so I get right into the action as I realize everyone is trying to take down a horse, so I get a couple stabs in. Gotta build those skills, you know. A couple golem-looking creatures emerge from the forest, and I am forced to defend myself. I guess I do okay, but I did take a bit of a beating, and now I continue on, 
continued down the cobblestone path. As I limp along, I see a sort of temple and decide to investigate. I cautiously approach and decide to enter, sneak down the steps only to realize that it's just a religious shrine with nothing good to steal and I make a swift exit. Next, I happen upon the small town of Oakwood. I enter this brightful Spriggett Inn and I'm confused by the sight of a horse standing in the middle of the room. Not sure what to do, so I just start clapping out of awkwardness. Yes. Unsure of whether or not to stay, I decide to get a room and take a rest for the night, but not before heading back downstairs to see what's going on with this horse. Approaching a table, a man immediately gets out of his seat. Before long, everyone else followed suit, and now I am all alone. I wonder to myself if they are just weary of strangers, or if I'm beginning to emit a foul odor, and it's time for a bath. I awake in a fever sweat as I can hear that song emanating through the cracks in the wooden floor. Somewhat surprised, I find the horse still standing in the same area of the main room. Walking through the town, I take a moment to gaze upon the mountains peering over the river. I can see Bleak Falls Barrow in the distance. I leave town and immediately get killed by a wolf. This time I'm prepared with my dagger drawn and a wolf launches up and falls from the sky. I pair up against a different wolf and die again. I approach once more, this time equipping different weapons. Two wolves come after me so I retreat back into town to see if I can get some help from the townsfolk. That plan didn't work as my man airballs his swing and the wolf literally bites my head off. This time, bow and arrow. Didn't work. I try luring the wolves into town again and this time my plan works flawlessly. Another wolf gets the jump on me by lurking behind a rock. The wolf wins and wins again. This time I get the best of it and I feel a little remorseful as the wolf lines are twitching. But I steal the pellet anyway and proceed to take a moment to eat some charred skeever. After going toe to toe with three wolves, I pridefully walk away with another wounded knee but I decide not to let it stop me as I press on. I come across three standing stones, warrior, thief, and mage. I choose the thief's standing stone and continue on my way as I bask in the amazing beam of light emitting from the top. I see another wolf and this one has a friend with it so I decide to take a shot with my bow. Miss, miss again. And then I land a hit and really pissed him off. Off. Flustered, I end up jumping off the cliff into the river. Trying to get away proves difficult and these ones end up killing me too. While jumping off the cliff, I did find a chest with some pretty promising loot inside so I decide to take it all. I find two hook swords and then go up and try to finish off the wolves with my slightly better weaponry. I suddenly forget how to draw my weapon and I end up dying again. This time I approach with my weapon drawn and find an opportunity to make a run for it so I run like the wind and make it to safety. Immediately upon arriving, Walk some away. Thalmor are hanging no. out in front of the Riverwood the Trader and so I strike up a conversation them by asking why they are so big-headed and find out that they have a deep hatred for Talos. I don't believe in Talos, but I told them I did, so they light me on fire and blast me with lightning. Once again, I die. I forgot to save, so I have to deal with the wolves again. This time I know better, and I make a run for it to Riverwood, and with a little help from one of the town guards, we defeat the wolf. My leg is once again damaged, and as I'm limping away, a man behind me says, Oh, damn legs playing up. And I'm like, me too, son. Me too. I craft myself a skull coat that I thought was going to look pretty nice and it ended up looking like an oogie boogie potato sack. I meet Orgnar at the Sleeping Giant Inn. He tells me I can use his alchemy table and gives me a letter warning me about necromancers between Falkreath and Whiterun. I have some time to kill, so I decide to grab a bite to eat and study my newly acquired spell tome I robbed off that mage's body. I start to get tired, so I introduce myself to Delphine and she rents me a room for 10 septums. It's 2.30 a.m., so I decide to get some rest and I can feel that spring is coming to an end. In my sleep, I reflect on what I've learned from my travels so far. I upgrade my health and put a point into one-handed combat. I wake up parched and hungry, so I ask Orgnar to, to serve me a meal. He says, "Of course." I go back into my room to change my hair and brush up on my alchemy skills. I've had a pretty rough couple days of dying and living and dying. I decide to take a bit of time to hang out in Riverwood to introduce myself around town. Next time we'll head towards White Run to see if we can't pick up some quests that help me level up a bit more so I can at least stand a chance in battle. Pieces.